Pokemon Sun and Moon, along with their Ultra counterparts, are known as some of the most difficult Pokemon games to Nuzlocke. So today, I'm gonna find out if I can beat a Pokemon Sun version Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Fairy types. The Nuzlocke rules are as follows, Fainted Pokemon must be permanently boxed, you can only catch the first encounter in any area, in our case the first fairy type, and all Pokemon must be given nicknames. As for the Hardcore Editions, Battle Mode must be played on Set Mode, no items can be used in battle from the bag except for held items, and you can't overlevel the next gym leader's highest level Pokemon. Now that's all fine and good, except for the fact that this game has Totem Pokemon and Grand Trials instead, but I'll explain how that works when we get into it. The following Pokemon are the available fairy types in Alola, and I choose to play Sun since it has Alolan Ninetales instead of Alolan Sand Slash, so we get an extra fairy and the ice type. And right off the bat, I'm deathly afraid of the Salazzle Trial. Poison's super effective against fairies and fire resists? Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and with that said, let's try to conquer the Alola region. Welcome to Alola, where the concept of knocking hasn't been invented. Meet Nebby, the cutest thing you've ever seen, but with bad luck to match. Oh yeah, and he hates bridges. Meet Poplio, who's gonna have to be our starter Pokemon since it evolves into a fairy type later on, and we're gonna use it until we find another one we can use instead, which ends up being a bit later than you think. So for now, we're stuck with Poplio, and unfortunately ours has a lonely nature, which is plus attack and minus defense, which is really bad for this early game. I decided to name my fairy types after Disney princesses, so I name Poplio Ariel, after which I give Howe a proper beating. Now to try and stay under the level cap, we're gonna have to avoid as many trainers as possible, because you fight lots of trainers in the early game, and we only have one Pokemon. And speaking of which, we have to go up against Howe, who now has two Pokemon, the first of which is Pichu, and we have to get lucky with a few rolls on his moves, but luckily he goes for Charm and a Tail Whip before attacking us with Thundershock. If it would have gone for one more Thundershock, I would have definitely been taken out by Litten here, but luckily it doesn't, and I can take out Litten with two water guns, and that's our first challenge, a pretty close call, and a fair warning of what's to come. The early game of Sun and Moon is not forgiving. The game then takes us back to school, where we have to fight tons of mandatory trainers, including a teacher that has a Magnemite, which I thought would be really difficult. However, because of Poplio's naturally high special defense, and the fact that we're at level 11 because of all the trainers we've had to fight, this battle doesn't end up being too difficult. We do end up at really low health at the end, but we make it through, and it's at this point where I have to make the rule where the level cap only applies to Grand Trials and not Totem Fights. I will consider the Totem Fights a soft level cap and stick to it wherever it's possible, but it's not an actual rule of the challenge because of this first section. Now when I say Pokefinder, is there anybody excited in the audience? Nobody? Okay. Now hold on, exactly which part of you do you want me to photograph? Who let this slide, Nintendo? <laughs> I then run into Lily, who asked me a question about my life choices, and I decide to go buy my own clothes for once. With my new look, it's time to take on Alima, which can be a really difficult early game fight. I've only got Poplio, and Alima's got a young goose that loves to use Leer, and a Smeargle in the back that uses physical leafage. After young goose gets its attack lowered, and I get my defense lowered, I decide to power up with work up as he goes for a tackle. I then start firing off water guns, and it's a two hit KO, so I only get hit by one more Leer, which means I'm at minus two before Smeargle comes out. Okay, obviously me being at minus two defense I lose. Hold on a minute, did I just live on 1 HP and retaliate back and almost take him out? Knowing that the AI isn't going to abuse the fact that it's faster and win, I go for another water gun, and since the potion didn't heal up to full, I actually win the battle. I was actually really worried about the fact that this Alima fight might be impossible, but we got through it, and now we have to worry about Totem Gumshoes. Now here's the thing, even though we're at the level cap of 15 with Poplio, Gumshoes is still a really strong evolved Pokemon, and we're a starter. Totem Gumshoes also has boosted defense, so I decide to go for work up the first turn, and I get scary faced, which doesn't really matter since I have Aqua Jet as my attacking move, but then he spawns in his Young Goose. My strategy is then to use Baby Doll Eyes on Gumshoes to weaken its attack a bit, but I'm kind of on a timer since Young Goose keeps using Leer. So with my boosted attack, I decide to get rid of Young Goose as Gumshoes just goes for damage with Bite, but it's really not looking good since Aqua Jet isn't doing much at all. I figure I'll take my chances and keep attacking, but we actually end up getting a crit on the second Aqua Jet and take out Totem Gumshoes, and I'm kind of amazed that we've gotten this far in the run, honestly. Now, as you may have seen, we actually surpass the level cap with Poplio there and get to level 16, but it's not actually a problem because we don't have to face a single trainer until we can get our next encounter and ditch Poplio. If we would have had to use Poplio in one single battle, we would have lost the challenge right here, but luckily we can catch a cutie fly in the Melly Melly Meadows. I name it Belle, and it ends up having a lax nature, which is actually pretty good for the next fight since it's plus defense. 
And so with our new cutie fly, we can't use Poplio until it's a Primarina and a Fairy type, and we have to take on Hala for our first grand trial. Now luckily for us, cutie fly is Bug and Fairy, which both resist fighting, so we have a pretty good matchup against Hala. And his first Pokemon, Mankey, goes down very, very swiftly, and his other Pokemon aren't really threats since they only have fighting and dark type moves, which we resist, but he does have sand attack on his Makuhita, which can be really annoying. I mean, you guys know how much I hate evasion strats, but luckily for me, he only goes for two sand attacks before he starts arm thrusting, I heal up with an Orin Berry, and finally take out Makuhita with a Fairy Wind. We could have been sand attacked so many more times, so I'm very grateful, but we do have to contend with his level 15 Cribrawler, and luckily I land with a Fairy Wind the first turn. I do get leered and take him down to really low health, as he then crits me with Pursuit to almost knock me out, but luckily I managed to hit the next Fairy Wind and take him out to beat Hala's Grand Trial. That would have gone so much worse if I would have missed more. After the trial, Poplio evolves into Brion because of passive experience from the experience share, but we still can't use it since Primarina turns into a Fairy type and not Brion. Own. Anyway, that's our first Grand Trial completed, and we can now leave Melly Melee Island, but I decide to go to 10 Carat Hill and catch myself a Carbink first. I name it Cinderella because of the diamonds, and it has a modest nature, which isn't that great for the early game, but it doesn't end up really mattering, and it has 150 in both defense stats, so it's going to be super useful in the early game. I then go back to where we fought Totem Gumshoes and pick up the TM for Thief that we can actually teach to Cutie Fly, and I can run around in the new area we have accessible to us because of Tauros Rock Smash and grab myself a couple leftovers from some Munchlaxes. I end up running around for like 20 minutes and grabbing myself two leftovers before we sail away from Melly Melly Island so that how Lily and I can get to Akala. And I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, because you guys seriously tore me a new one in the comments when I pronounced Norwich Norwich. Like, how am I supposed to know? Maybe spell it Norwich next time. Either way, as soon as we arrive in Akala, we have to fight Dexio from X and Y, and he's actually kind of challenging. Fortunately, though, we have Cinderella, and we got the TM for Confide, so I can lower Slowpoke's special attack, and then just raise my attack to plus six with Sharpen. After that, all it takes is a couple of Smackdowns, and Slowpoke is down. I mean, Espeon is kind of a threat, and it almost takes us out with Confusion, but two smackdowns does the job and we beat Dexio. We then get access to Route 4 where we can either find Iglybuff or Eevee and I end up getting Eevee which I catch and name Rapunzel. And just like Cutie Fly, it has a lax nature which is plus defense and minus special defense which isn't that great for the fights coming up. Now, to evolve Eevee, you actually have to have two hearts in Pokemon Refresh and a Fairy move and Pokemon Refresh really shouldn't be allowed in a hardcore Nuzlocke but I'm gonna let it slide just to get these two hearts for Sylveon but no more. Either way, after Route 4, we get to Paniola Town, where Hal really wants to have a battle, and this game seriously is just difficult battle after difficult battle. Hal starts out with his newly evolved Pikachu, and we start out with Cutifly, and he doesn't do that much with Quick Attack, and I retaliate with some damage with Silverwind. The next turn he goes for another Quick Attack, but I end up healing up almost to full between Draining Kiss and Leftovers. And even though I'm at full health, an Electro Ball crit almost takes out Cutie Fly. Honestly, battles in Sun and Moon are always so risky, it doesn't really help that Cutie Fly is thinner than paper when it comes to defense, but obviously as Toracat comes in, we have to switch out into Cinderella. And since Toracat doesn't have any super effective moves, it just keeps going for Lick, paralyzes me, and I can keep spamming Smackdown until we win the battle. But keep in mind that Hao has a bad habit of challenging us to surprise battles. And while we're in Paniola Town, this Magmar gives me a Quick Ball, and I don't even want to know where you stored that, bro. We then have to fight Gladion, but even though Type Null's kind of scary, the combination of Sharpen, Reflect, and our massive defenses on Carbank makes him really easy. After the battle, I make sure to do a little bit more of Pokemon Refresh, and we get Eevee up to the two hearts required, and so after the next double battle we have to face, Eevee actually evolves into Sylveon. This means we actually have a little bit of offensive firepower on our team, because fairy types tend to be kind of bulky. And speaking of bulky fairy types, our next encounter we can get at Brooklet Hill right before the next trial is Morlol, which is going to be super important. And listen, I know that Fiona from Shrek isn't a Disney princess, but I named Morlol Fiona, and unfortunately for us, it has a careful nature, which is minus special attack. However, that boost in special defense is actually really good, because Morlol has some really high base spadef. And now that we have more lol, it's time to take on the next challenge of Totem Wishy Washy. Now, Totem Wishy Washy can actually be a really scary Pokemon to face, but the only attacking move it has is Water Gun. And since we have monstrous special defense on Morlol for this part of the game, and the fact that it can only really hit us with Soak to turn us into a Water type so we do less stab damage, I'm not very worried. So even though I could be at level 20 here, I go into the battle at level 18. And as you've just seen, my strategy was to put Totem Wishy Washy to sleep the first turn, and even though it gets to call its ally Pokemon, 
Pokemon, I can start using Confide to lower its special attack, which is the only way it's going to do damage to me. After a while, it wakes up, and it starts using Growl on me, which doesn't matter at all since my primary attacking move is going to be Mega Drain. I decide to start attacking the ally Pokemon with some Mega Drains, just to make it so that it's a one-hit knockout as soon as I get rid of Wishy Washy. If you weren't aware, if you knock out the ally Pokemon, it just calls another, so it's not really helpful to knock it out, but if we can get it down so that we can knock it out in one hit after Totem Wishy Washy, that's good. Anyway, at this point, all we have to do is use Mega Drains until Wishy Washy is taken down. It does annoyingly heal up with a Citrus Fairy, but but eventually we get it down so low that its schooling ability turns it into the little fish. Normally I'd be pretty scared of Totem Wishy Washy, but with this strategy it was actually really easy, and we knock out Totem Wishy Washy, then the ally Wishy Washy, and claim our Water Z Crystal. I'm glad we got that one behind us, because I'm very scared of what's coming up. But before we can move on to Kiawe's trial, we run into Hapu, and I'm not quite sure if she's supposed to be 70 or 12. Now while I find Kiawe's trial hilarious, I did have to do a lot of planning and calcs for this one. As I mentioned earlier, Salazzle's super scary with its super effective poison type and resisting fire type. And based on my calculations, because of Morlul's high special defense, it doesn't get one shot by Flame Burst from Salazzle as long as it's not a crit, and I actually managed to pull off a Sleep Powder. But this is where it gets really tricky, because Salandit gets called in, and Venoshock wrecks my whole team. And since Salandit has Taunt, I have to go for the super iffy strategy of sending in Carbink and just hoping that Salazzle stays asleep while I use Smackdown. Unfortunately though, Salazzle wakes up, but it does use Flame Burst, so I don't get Toxic this turn. I do get subjected to Torment though, so I can use one more Smackdown, but this turn Salandit does actually poison me, which I can heal off with a Petra Berry, but I'm way too low, so I do have to switch out if I want to keep my Carbink alive. So I switch into Sylveon, who of course gets immediately toxic, and I hope that I can take it out with Quick Attack, but I don't quite do enough damage. For whatever reason though, Salazzle goes for Venom Drench, so I actually end up living the turn, and I can take out Salazzle with a Quick Attack next turn, but it comes at a high cost. I contemplated switching out for a really long time, but in the end it was worth it to take out Salazzle, but that means that Salandit is going to get the KO with Venoshock. Sylveon, you're a hero for making this battle winnable at all. After Sylveon's Noble Sacrifice, Carbink can come in and just clean up with a couple of Smackdowns. The beginning of that battle was pretty well thought out, but forgive me when I say that the rest of it was pretty much trial by fire. And I swear this game is just trying to taunt me, because on my way to the Lush Jungle, I run into this trainer that has a Sylveon, which just makes me sad. But after that battle, Morlow actually evolves into Shenotic, which is a really awesome power boost. And right after this is kind of where I make a big oopsie. As you guys can see, the current hard level cap for Olivia's Grand Trial is 27, and I actually thought the Totem Lorantis was level 26 for whatever reason, when it's actually at level 24, and I did get to level 25 before realizing this, so I am going to be at that level for this battle, but it's not breaking my Grand Trial rules, so I'm not going to restart the run just for it, even though I would have liked to be at level 24. Also, can we just mention that Mallow telling us to turn it to goo right in front of her like this is probably the most inappropriate thing I've ever heard. But it's then time for us to face Totem Lorantis, and this is going to be made easier by the fact that we are one level higher, but I don't think it would have been too difficult a trial anyway. The very first turn I get hit by a Razor Leaf, and I can retaliate with a Pollen Puff that almost takes it out as he then calls in for his cast form. The next turn he goes for Synthesis, but since it doesn't take him up to full health, I can just take him out with another Pollen Puff, and honestly, I'm more afraid of this cast form than I was of the Lorantis. It does go for Headbutt and Not Sunny Day the first turn, so I can get some HP back with Draining Kiss as he then sets up the sun. Not wanting to lose my Rabombi to a Weather Ball, I decide to switch into Carbink and just take out the cast form with a couple of Smackdowns. Anyway, that's it for the fourth trial, and we only have Olivia to worry about here on Akala. And listen, about the level 25 thing, I gotta give you guys something to complain about in the comments, otherwise it wouldn't be an Antler Boy video. Moving on though, now that we can catch Pokemon in the Lush Jungle, we can run into Comfey, which I catch and name Moana. It has a neutral nature which is neither good or bad. And with our newly acquired Pokemon, it's time for our Grand Trial against Olivia, but I'm here for more than just the Grand Trial. I'm challenging her for the title of Miss Alola. So I decide to start off the battle with Fiona so I can go for Sleep Powder the first turn, and Nosepass ends up being asleep, but Olivia just heals up with a full heal the next turn. And so I put Nosepass to sleep again, and after getting it down to a sliver, she heals up with a Super Potion and actually paralyzes me with Thunder Waves, so I have to switch out into Comfey. Now as soon as I send in Comfey, I start going for Growths as she Thunder Waves me, which I can just shake off with a Cherry Berry. I can then go ahead and take out Nosepass as she sends in Boldor, and I can start setting up on this thing, and even though it does a lot of damage, Moana has really low base HP, which means that as soon as I go for a draining move, I'm gonna get most of my HP back. 
Now, Nosepass and Bulldor were really never on my radar. It's mostly her Lycanroc with the Continental Crush that I'm worried about, and we actually end up living it on pretty low HP, and I can get back most of it by using a Draining Kiss. The next turn, she goes for Rock Throw, which I suppose she has so that the Z-Move wouldn't be too powerful, but that means we can just win the battle by going for another Draining Kiss, and that's our second Grand Trial done. But even more importantly, from now on, you guys have to refer to me as Miss Alola. Our next destination is Aether Paradise, where we run into Nihiligo, which is pretty easy to cheese since you can just go for protect until it runs away. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that you don't get any time to do any preparations in between this battle and the Hal fight as soon as you get to Ula Ula Island. Speaking of which, Ula Ula is our next destination, and here we have to fight Hal right away, which is why I started with Rabombi against Nihiligo. This way we can have the type advantage as Hal sends out his newly evolved Raichu, which is actually pretty scary, but we end up taking a Psychic fairly well, we would have gone down to crit, and then we can one-shot with a Pollen Puff. He then sends in his Torcat and we can absolutely tank his Inferno Overdrive by sending in Carbink and win the battle pretty easily, but that Raichu can really cause you some problems. He then only has Leafeon left, which we can take down super easily since they have Hidden Power Fire on Fiona. Now that we have access to Mally Garden, we can get our next encounter, which is a Cottony, which I capture and name Tiana. It ends up having a Sassy Nature, which is minus speed, which is pretty terrible, and the Infiltrator ability, which might actually come in handy later on. Oh yeah, and Team Skull are occupying a bus station, like what? Somehow we managed to catch the bus all the way to the top of Mount Hokulani, and here we have to face our next challenge, which is a really difficult battle for us against the Steel-type user Molane. He ends up avoiding our first Sleep Powder and hits us with an Air Slash, but we hit the next one, which he of course just heals up with a full heal. Now, very fortunately for me, I mentioned earlier that Fiona actually has Hidden Power Fire, which is gonna be the key to winning this battle. After seeing that Hidden Power Fire wasn't a 3-hit KO, I decided to go for Mega Drain to do some damage to not put him into the red, but I don't think it did enough, and I end up getting down really low, so I have to heal up with Moonlight. And as you can see here, it didn't quite do enough for me to be able to take him out with Hidden Power, but luckily Molane goes for a potion here, so I can go for a Moonlight and start just stalling to get my HP back. And I end up skipping a whole bunch of stalling here, where I just go for Moonlights as he heals up with Super Potions, and in the end, I don't want to be at low health as he sends out his next Pokemon, so I hit a Sleep Powder and go for Moonlight to heal myself up as I can take him down with a Hidden Power. As you saw, Doug Trio tried to go for Sucker Punch so I can easily put it to sleep and then Hidden Power was a two-hit KO and now we have to contend with Matang. Now, unfortunately, I get the effects for Paralysis instead of putting him to sleep, but in the end, it doesn't matter and I can take him out and we win that clutch battle with Fiona and now we have to take on Sophocles' trial. Like, how's this guy named after a Greek philosopher? And for this trial, we have to take on Totem Vicavolt, which actually only has physical moves and its physical attack is only 70. So my strategy here is to lead with Tiana, tank a Bug Bite, and poison it with Poison Powder, and just wait for it to go down. And this is actually pretty much as easy done as it said, because I can just switch into my massively defensive Cinderella, go for Reflect, and just use Protect every other turn, and it doesn't really matter that I'm paralyzed. Eventually, the thing's gonna go down to Poison. In the end, I get pretty low on Carbink, so I switch into Moana to tank some hits, and this is when Vicavolt goes down to Poison, so now I just have to take out Charger Bug, and that's game. Listen, with this strategy, the fight ended up being pretty easy, and we only have two trials left to do, and best of all, we don't have to see this Sophocles imitator anymore. But our mission here on Ulu is far from over, and we now have to take on Guzmo, who has a pretty scary Galissapod. Luckily, we can spend the first turn using Protect to dodge his first impression, but then he starts using Swords Dance, and I just match him with Charm, and this ends up going on for seriously 20 turns. It's a very good thing for me that both Charm and Swords Dance have 20 PP, but I run out of charm here, like I use it 20 times in a row. After this, the only move he can use is Razor Shell, so we can get a poison with Poison Powder. And at this point, basically all I'm doing is using Protect and Giga Drain to stall until I'm at low enough HP where I actually have to switch out to Cinderella. And honestly, Comfey would have probably been a better play here, because Cinderella barely takes the hit, but after the poison damage, Galissapod's emergency exit activates and it switches out into Ariados. And this Ariados has super weak moves, so I take a turn to Protect, get some leftovers healing, and then I set up Reflect, and at this point, Ariados can barely do anything to me at all. And even though I'm sitting at well below 10% HP, I can just take this Ariados out with three Psychics, no problem. Except our problems aren't quite over yet, because Guzma still has Galissapod in the back, and our Reflect wears off right here. We can dodge a potential first impression by using Protect, but then we have to switch into Fiona to take a Razor Shell, which gets a crit, but we live it. And after healing up with the Moonlight, the poison damage doesn't quite take out Galissapod, so I do have to make one final switch into Comfey, and eventually Galissapod goes down. Phew! 
After the fight with Guzma, we press on and find a Sunstone, which means we can evolve Tiana into Whimsicott, which is a fantastic Pokemon to have on the team. And as soon as we get to Tapu Village, we can get the Sun exclusive Vulpix, which we can use as soon as it evolves, and I name it Aurora. It's then finally time for the last trial on Ula Ula Island, and we face off against Totem Mimikyu. Now, you know how I said earlier that the ability Infiltrator may come in handy? Well, Infiltrator is an ability that hits status moves through Substitute, and that includes Mimikyu's Disguise, so we can actually poison it. It does end up healing the first poison powder and we miss the second one, but with the third, we have it poisoned and now we can just wait for the thing to go down and luckily it got Haunter as its ally Pokemon and not Gengar. Haunter can't really touch us, but after we get low from a play rough, I decide to go for a charm on Mimikyu to have its attack and then swap out into Cinderella. Then all I have to do is use the protect stalling strats that I used against Vikavolt against Mimikyu instead, but I make the fatal mistake of going for Psychic against Haunter, which actually takes it out, which means Mimikyu calls for Gengar. This is actually really scary since it has Shadow Ball, but it ends up going for Nightshade, and the combination of that and Play Rough actually takes me down to 4 HP, but then Mimikyu goes down to Poison, so now at least I only have to contend with Gengar. I decide to switch into Moana, who's pretty bulky, and I can take out Gengar with a Magical Leaf, and that's the last trial on Ula Ula. I actually thought that trial was going to be way more difficult as soon as Gengar came out, but we lucked out a little bit since it didn't go for Shadow Ball, and I decided to run around in the thrifty Mega Mart to see if we could find a Klefki or a Mimikyu, and we actually end up running into Mimikyu, which is the one I wanted. I name it Mulan, and it ends up having a Brave Nature, which at least boosts attack, so that's good in my book. We then actually run into Grimsley from the Unova Elite Four who adds Sharpedo to our ride pager. I mean, it's bad enough that the Pokemon he gives us is called Sharpedo, but seriously, Grimsley, take your filthy ways back to Unova. Anyway, once again, casting Grimsley aside, we arrive at Poe Town, which is looking pretty grim. Like, what exactly is going on here? Either way, here in Poe Town, we can find our Ice Stone, and after Aurora levels up to 36 and learns Ice Beam, there's no reason for us to hold back, and we can evolve into Nine Tails, which means we can actually use it now. And our mission here in Poe Town is to rescue a young goose from Guzma. And to make that a little bit easier, I decided to give a PP up to Tiana so that we have more charms. But aside from that, our strategy against Guzma is pretty much exactly the same. We dodge the first impression by using Protect, and then we use up 20 of our charms so that we can get rid of all his Swords Dances. This time, because of the PP up, I have additional charms so that I can weaken him a lot, and Guzma ends up being pretty easy to beat. Oh, and this grunt totally embodies how it feels as a viewer when a YouTuber tells you to subscribe. But you're not the boss. What's the deal, homie? You're not the boss of me. Hmm. Subscribe to my channel. Anyway, after grinding up to the level cap to take on Nanu, Brion actually evolves into Primarina, so we can finally use our starter. And with our newly acquired Primarina, it's time to take on Nanu and the grand trial of Ula Ula, and I decide to start with my newly acquired Mimikyu. And after raising my attack and defense by using Bulk Up, Nanu takes out my disguise by using Shadow Ball, and I can then just take him out by using two Shadow Claws, getting pretty low on health in the process. Next up, Nanu sends in Krakorok, which does lower my attack back to neutral with Intimidate, so I have to switch out into my Bombi, who can tank an Earthquake and then just one-shot with Pollen Puff. Nanu's final Pokemon is a Lowland Persian, which is pretty annoyingly bulky, but after a while, I managed to get a Poison Powder on it with Tiana. And just like every other trainer, he ignores the Hardcore Nuzlocke rules and uses an item so that he can heal himself up, but at least I get another Poison Powder off the next turn. And with that said and done, all I had to do was switch into Cinderella, stall a little bit with Protect, and eventually take it out with Ancient Power, and that's the Ula Ula Grand Trial. Only one island to go. Now I say one island, but we actually have to make a pit stop with Hao and Gladion and go over to the Aether Paradise where we can actually pick up the TM for Protect, which is going to be way better than Poison Powder. And I just love this confused Aether Foundation guy, like, sometimes you just gotta give up, homie. We then run into Guzma, who turns out he's helping Lusamine, and you guessed it, we use all of our charms again. After that, Guzma's team goes down as easily as always, and we find out that Lily's mom has a frozen Pokemon collection. We think that's pretty unethical, so she decides to fight us, and she switches out her Clefable for her Lilligant, which I just take out with Belle. Her next Pokemon is Miss Magis, which gets destroyed by Mulan, and then Tiana comes and wrecks her Melodic. She then sends back in her Clefable, so we give Primarina the satisfaction of taking it out, and finally she has Beware, which is pretty annoying, and even though it only has normal and fighting moves, so it can't touch Mimikyu at all, we basically can't touch it back, so I send in Bell, and we almost get ruined by a Hammer Arm, but the second Dazzling Gleam does the job, and we beat Lusamine. And at 1 HP, so these battles really don't keep getting any easier. Also, Lily evolved into her Z-Form and is ready to take on the world. We then set sail together for our next destination of Pony Island, where I can 
can capture myself a Gramble, which has the Intimidate ability and a Jolly Nature. Lily and I then decide to go to Executor Island, where we find the Sun Flute, and since we have the Moon Flute, Lily suggests we should start a flute band, and this can't end well. But here on Pony Island, we're put in a pretty awkward position, since we have to fight Hapu before we fight Totem Kamo'o. And the thing is that the level cap for Hapu is 48, and Kamo'o is level 45, so we're gonna be a bit overleveled for Kamo'o, but it's dragon fighting anyway, so we're gonna beat it very easily. That being said, I decide to fight Hapu at a slightly lower level, and I start out with Primarina, and she goes for Dugtrio, which sets up a sandstorm as I go for workup. The next turn, she goes for an Earthquake, which I count that I can live, barring a crit, but I do need to put a Citrus Berry on Primarina so I heal up and not die to Sandstorm. After Dugtrio goes down, she sends in Mudstale, which we can take out in one hit because of our workup boost, which we really needed since we don't want to get hit by her Z-move. She then sends in her Flygon, which only has Dragon Breath and Earth Power, so Tiana's in here really safe, and we can just stall it out with Poison once again. Wanting to keep as much health as possible for Gastrodon on Tiana, though, I decide to switch out into Mimikyu so that it can break my decision skies, and then Flygon just goes down to poison. Her final Pokemon is then Gastrodon, which we very easily take down with Giga Drain, and that's it for Hapu. This means we've completed our final Grand Trial, yet we still need to complete our final regular trial, so we go up against Totem Kamoo. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect a dragon fighting trial to be very difficult either, guys. Lily then takes me to the Altar of the Sun, where she suggests we do some band practice. Oh my goodness, Lily, what are we doing? We can't do this, it's so terrible, huh? No, this is the most awful music played in the history of all time. I shall banish you to Ultra Space for your crimes against the universe. Oh no, not Ultra Space! As we arrive in Ultra Space, it turns out that Lily's mom is already there, and she's so disappointed with Lily that she turns herself into an evil jellyfish and wants to destroy us. Now, Lusamine starts out the battle by sending out her Clefable, which has boosted special defense, so I decide to go into Mimikyu and use Bulk Up as she uses Metronome. The first turn, she gets Super Fang, which doesn't affect us at all, but the second one, she gets a Poison Fang, which breaks our disguise. On the third turn of Bulk Up, she ends up getting Payback, which doesn't do that much damage since it doesn't have that much physical attack, and the fourth turn, she actually gets Forest Curse, which adds the Grass type to Mimikyu. The next turn I attack, and even though I'm at plus four, it doesn't take out Clefable, and she retaliates with a Moon Blast, which does a lot of damage. I can then take her out with another Shadow Claw, and her next Pokemon is a speed-boosted Miss Magus, which gets one shot by a Shadow Snake. Her next Pokemon is Lilligant that doesn't go down to a single Shadow Snake, but she tries to go for Leech Seed, and since I got Forest Cursed into the Grass type, it doesn't actually affect me, which is really funny. She then sends in Milotic, which has boosted attack for whatever reason, and so I go into Primarina since she can only hit me with Hydro Pump, but I just don't do that much damage with Moon Blast, so eventually I switch into Tiana. Hydro Pump actually does way more than I expected to Tiana, and even though we can fire off a Giga Drain and get a bit of health back, we have to switch out once again. This time I switch to Aurora for whatever reason, which really isn't smart at all since it almost gets one shot, and I have to switch out into Mimikyu again. Then after us bulking up and it going for recover for a million turns, I finally take it out. Her final Pokemon is then Beware, which still can't touch us with its normal and fighting moves, but this time we have Play Rough, so we can do a lot of damage back, and eventually we take it out and defeat Lusamine without any deaths, which I can't believe. After our triumph, Solgaleo lets us come back to the real world if Lily promises to never play music again. Oh, and he has another message. Subscribe! So this is it. Now we can finally start making our way to Mount Lanakila and the Pokemon League. But first we have to take on Gladion, who starts out with his Crobat, which is basically just bulk up fodder, and then we take it out with some Shadow Snakes. What I'm really more worried about is the fact that he has Night Slash on Weavile, but he doesn't end up getting the crit, and we can just one-shot with Play Rough. What I'm really most worried about here is Lucario, who sees the kill with Metal Claw, so I tank that with Ariel, who then has to tank the Corkscrew Crash! But Ariel being a beast hangs on on 9 HP, and we can retaliate with our own Z-move and knock this boy out with a Twinkle Tackle. And after a bit of switching around against Silvalli, we end up taking it out with an Ice Beam from Aurora, and we can finally get through Victory Road to the Pokemon League. But before we can fight the E4, we have to go up against Hao, and this time, he's just a complete pushover for our final team. And for whatever reason, it's at this point I realize I can buy Swords Dance in Mali City for Mimikyu, which would have made things so much easier. Before we can fight the Elite Four, though, I get a very serious call from Olivia, who wants a shot to get back her title as Miss Alola. I decide to give her one last chance, and so I wager the title on the Elite Four battle, but she gives me four heart skills, which lets me relearn a few moves for our Pokemon. So it's now time to lock ourselves into the Elite Four, and we start off by fighting Hala, who sends in Hariyama as I go for Bell. Because of my Shield Dust ability, I don't flinch because of Fake Out the first turn, and it kind of does a lot of damage, but he can't really touch me with his quad-resisted close combat after that, so I make sure to set up a lot of Quiver Dances against this thing. Then I just have to click Dazzling Gleam to win, but I don't think you expected a Fighting-type trainer to be difficult for my Fairy-types. 
So that's it for Elite Four member Hala, but now we have the most important battle of the run in front of us, Olivia, for the title of Miss Alola. Now Olivia has rock types, which can be kind of tricky to deal with for me, but the first turn I can just Giga Drain this Relicanth to delete it. Her second Pokemon is then Lycanroc, and I expect it to use Continental Crush here, so I protect to reduce the damage a little bit, and we tank it fine. The next turn, I can go ahead and set up a Leech Seed, as I'm brought down to pretty low health, but I can just start Protect Stalling the way I always have here again. And after all the recovery from Leftovers and Leech Seed and Giga Drain, I can actually tank another Stone Edge the next turn, and so that's exactly what I do, hoping not to get crit, and luckily I don't. Now, you know how I've gotten annoyed every single time a trainer uses a Full Restore or a Potion in this run? Well, of course Olivia uses one here, so we have to try to take it down once again. However, one thing I didn't know is that Full Restores actually don't get rid of the Leech Seed, effect, so we don't have to use that again. And eventually my stalling strats pay off, and Lycanroc goes down, and she sends in her own Carbink, and my only chance to take this down effectively is just gonna be Leech Seed Toxic Protect, which is exactly what I do, and it too goes down eventually. After getting a Leech Seed off on Probopass, it paralyzes me, so I don't feel like it's worth sticking around since I can't Toxic, so I switch into Mimikyu. After getting my Disguise broken, I decide to go for a Swords Dance, and then try to take this thing out, but Probopass is so bulky, man. We do end up taking the Paralysis, and not even another Shadow Claw takes this thing out, but luckily we still have that Leech Seed, which ends up doing the trick. She then sends in her final Pokemon, a Lolan Golem, and I have to switch out into my Carbink. Using Carbink, I can set up a Reflect so that Thunder Punch doesn't do that much damage, and eventually I can get a Toxic on Golem as well to get that gradual damage and Protect Stall once again. But of course, Olivia uses a full heal, so I end up having to set up another Reflect, and I barely live, and I don't even have time to set up a Toxic, so I go ahead and switch out into Tiana, who actually resists a lot of this thing's moves except for Steamroller. And as you can see, because of the Reflect, it's barely doing anything, but even without Reflect, it doesn't do that much at all. Now that we've got Tiana in, we can of course go for a Leech Seed as well, and it's looking so good, it's looking like we're getting the KO, and it's gonna go down, come on, full restore. That's right, of course she heals up fully, so we have to go for another Toxic eventually, and after waiting it out, Golem finally goes down, and we beat Olivia, and we are Miss Alola. Fortunately for us though, Olivia is probably our toughest matchup in the whole Elite Four, because next up is Acerola, and she starts out by using her Sableye, so I go into Mimikyu, and I have a free turn to just set up a Swords Dance. I made sure to equip a Person Berry to get rid of Confusion, and then I can just one-shot Sableye with Play Rough. Delmize is our next victim, and we take it out in one Shadow Claw. Then she sends in her Frostlass, and one Shadow Sneak does the trick. Palisand is next, and it's pretty bulky. No, okay, one shot as well. Then she's got Drift Blim, and of course, one Shadow Claw does the trick here too. I pretty much expected Acerola to be a total pushover, but now we got our final Elite Four member, the Golfer Kahili. She starts up with Skarmory, and I set up a Swords Dance as she gets a layer of Spikes up. She then actually misses a Steel Wing, so I get another Swords Dance. Then more Spikes, and I get the plus six without breaking Disguise. Amazingly, she misses again as I take her down to Sturdy, and since I know she's gonna heal, Full Restore actually works in my favor this time, and I can take her out with a couple of Shadow Sneaks. Her Mandy Buzz then just gets one shot by a player off, and her Toucanon comes in and goes for its Flying Z move. What's really funny about this, though, is because of all those misses, we still have Disguise, so it does zero damage to me, and then I can just take it out the next turn. I did have a Key Berry on my Mimikyu, so I did get a Defense Boost because I got touched by a Physical Attack, but I just end up taking everything out with Shadow Snake, so I guess that's that. This means that with a bit of good strategizing and a lot of stalling, we got through the Elite Four without losing a single Pokemon, and now we have to face off against Kikui for the first ever champion title in Alola. Kikui starts off with Lycanroc, but Mimikyu just avoids all the attacks. He misses a Stone Edge so we can set up our Swords Dance. The next turn, however, he does manage to break our Disguise with Stone Edge, so we get up to plus four. And the turn after that, he does a nasty amount of damage, but he doesn't crit, so I can take him out with a Shadow Claw. Expecting to be slower and die, I go for a Shadow Sneak, but he misses a Thunder Wave. Since I lived, I end up looking it up, and I'm actually faster than Magnezone, so I can take it out with Shadow Claw, and then Decidueye comes out, but I can just one-shot it using Shadow Snake. But that's gonna be it for Mimikyu's Reign of Terror. I don't wanna switch anything into Brave Bird, so unfortunately it has to go down. What's great is I pretty much totally resist this thing with Carbink, so I can set up a Reflect and try to go for Toxic, and you guessed it, try to stall this thing out. We do end up being faster with Reflect because it used Whirlwind, so Tiana gets shuffled in, so we have to switch back into Cinderella, but we eat a Brave Bird for breakfast. 
The next turn, I manage to get up Stealthbrox first since he goes for Whirlwind again and sends in Primarina. Now, a really important detail this turn is that the Tailwind petered out, and I know that the AI loves to prioritize Tailwind, so I just take the turn to stay in and try to take it out with Sparkling Aria. Very unfortunately for us here, the Reflect wears off just as Snorlax gets sent in, and oh boy, am I afraid of this thing. I'm just gonna try to do as much damage as I possibly can to this thing with Primarina, so I go for the Hydra Vortex, and I actually do a fair amount of damage here, and I try to do some more chip by just going for Moon Blasts. Being at such low health, I decide to keep Primarina for later, and I send in my Carbink so I can go for Reflect and maybe stop him from doing so much damage. But the next turn, he goes for Heavy Slam, which does a ton of damage since it's quad effective and he's so heavy, but I do manage to get off a Toxic. Your sacrifice was noble, Cinderella. I don't think we could have gotten this far without you. Now here, I certainly didn't think he was going to go for a full restore at that range, which is why I sent in Rabombi, but at this point, my Pollen Puffs are really pathetic. So this really puts me in a bad spot, where I kind of just have to do as much damage as I can to this thing, and unfortunately wait for Rabombi to go down, which means Tiana needs to come out once again and finish the job with Leech Seed. Now even though we're taking a lot of damage from Snorlax, since it has so much health, Leech Seed gives us back almost everything that we took. And this time, I actually expect Kikui to use a full restore, so I go for Toxic so that we can whittle him down that much faster. And so I go for the classic Protect, Poison, and Leech Seed package, which actually heals me up to full health. But the next turn, I have to go for Giga Drain since I can't Protect twice, and I actually expect him to take me out, but I live and almost get healed back to full. So now all we have to do is go for Protect and- Oh my goodness, why do I even play this game? Anyway, the next turn, I get him poisoned, but I'm actually out of Protect PP at this point, and I'm at a range where he can actually- kill me, so unfortunately, Tiana has to go down to this Snorlax, but finally, we've burned all the full restores, and we should be able to take it down. At this point, we only have two Pokemon left, so I decide to go into Ariel with such little health, do some chip damage, and watch him go down to poison. This is it, my final Pokemon against his, and it's Ninetales versus Ninetales. The first turn, I go for a Nasty Plot as I get hit by a Dazzling Gleam. He then goes for Safeguard, and I hit him for big damage, but did I say he didn't have any full restores? Because of course he has a another one. It then comes down to this last turn where I live a Dazzling Gleam and can take him out with my own, and we actually win Pokemon Sun and Moon using only Fairy types. Oh my goodness, we seriously lost all of our team except for one Pokemon in that final fight for a total of six deaths the entire run. And what did we learn from this? Well, I guess the Fairy types are pretty bulky and that stalling is a way you can get through this very scary game. And listen, I do these types of Pokemon challenge runs on my channel, so if it's the kind of thing you like, remember to subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. You can also go ahead and follow me over on Twitch at Antlerboy Live. and if you want to see another run right away, my friend Dystrophy actually posted a Water-type Hardcore Nuzlocke in HeartGold and SoulSilver where I do make a guest appearance, so let me know if you can find that. The link to that video is going to be in the description down below, and until we see each other next time, make sure you give me suggestions for what game and type you want to see next, and I will see you guys on the other side.